someone recently left a comment in one of the calculus videos asking why we need to use trigonometry in calculus. So I thought what I'd go ahead and do is make a video on why trigonometry is is vastly important. You could argue that it is you could argue that it is one of the most central topics in all of science and engineering. And in the process, I'll explain how this relates to calculus. So how could trigonometry be that important? What am I talking about? I've got to be over exaggerating, right? I am not. And there are two big reasons why this subject is so central to everything we do. Two big reasons. The first reason, the Cartesian coordinate system. Each axis is 90 degrees to each other. So think about it. In science and engineering, we use this coordinate system pretty much everywhere for everything. If there needs to be a coordinate system, this is the first one we use. I mean, it's just natural. Cavemen, when they decided we need to establish some sort of directions for things, the natural idea is up, down, left, right, forward, backward. Didn't have to be that way. It could feel more natural to our brains to say, okay, forward, backward, and then up from forward and backward 30 degrees, and then to the left and right up 60 degrees. That could feel natural to us, that coordinate system, but it doesn't. The one with 90 degrees between each axis is natural. That's the one that makes sense to everyone, the most sense, that is the easiest to use, the easiest to conceptualize. And you might be thinking, well, that's just for directions, right? If I need to go north or northwest, or if I need to specify the position of something. No, the deeper you get into science and engineering, everything has a coordinate system, pretty much everything. And again, if it has a coordinate system, the vast majority of the time, it's going to be a Cartesian coordinate system, just like this, with the 90 degrees between the coordinate axes. I mean, velocities, the velocities of things. So position, velocity, and acceleration, everyone's familiar with that, but so many phenomena have directions that, like, for example, heat transfer. Heat transfer in the X, in the Y, and in the Z. There's components. You break down the components of something into X, Y, and Z directions like the heat equation, the partial differential equation, the heat equation, right? It's broken up partial X, Y, and Z. Any equation for anything, any relation where you see X, Y, and Z, that, is a, that has trigonometry in it. Sines, cosines, you're going you're gonna to run into sines and cosines and, and, and tangents and everything. We need to be able to, once we have a coordinate system established, and again, it's the majority of the time, it's a Cartesian coordinate system. We need to be able to break those components down, switch between things, manipulate everything efficiently, quickly. That's what trigonometry allows us to do. And when it comes to the Cartesian coordinate system, you don't just have to think of directions. It goes further than that. I mean, we do, humans do everything in that 90 degree mindset. So like if you're plotting, for example, the price versus cost or something like that, which gives you the or revenue versus or no, what is it? Profit versus cost, something like that. Or maybe you have it in 3D like this. You've got cost versus revenue gives you profit on the Z, whatever. There's no directions there. There's no north, south, up, down, or whatever. But we plot things still at 90 degrees. So if you're going to have relate, if you're going to establish relations between profit and cost, we graph everything with, on, with 90 degree relations. So you're going to be running into more trigonometry. The rate of change of profit with respect to the cost it's going to be you're, going to be you're going to be finding a line that relative to the cost axis and the profit axis. Not just, that's, that's more trigonometry. It's everywhere in everything. So if that wasn't enough to illustrate the importance of trigonometry, we're only halfway. I've only talked about the first point of why this, this subject is so important. It's so central. The sine function, the cosine function, sinusoids, right? If you plot sine of theta versus theta, sine of theta versus time, you know, if you, if you establish something, a time varying parameter with sine or cosine, you get this sinusoid. This curve is absolutely a fundamental curve of nature, this, this smoothly varying curve. This is arguably as fundamental as a line is, maybe even more fundamental. It's related to a circle. It's related to pi. Right, you can absolutely relate the sinusoidal function, sines and cosines, to circles. Angular velocity, like the rate of change of the of the radians, corresponds to the frequency of the sinusoid. There are so many things that you're going to come across. There's so many things in nature that you're going to come across in engineering and, and physics 
that are that are modeled this way that use this this kind of a function as a model absolutely if you took some time to think about it there's so many things in nature and life that it's not linear it's it's sinusoidal it's this smooth curve like this and again it's also related to a circle directly related to a circle that's about as fundamental in life as it is circles are everywhere this kind of a path right i mean you could have this as a path of a car right like like a circular um a turn like a, a on a roadway, a turn. That's that's radial. They they make that probably. I don't know for sure, but I, I, I'm assuming they make it radial like this, like a, a circular arc. That can be related to trigonometry. This is not a smooth circular arc. This is just a smoothly oscillating or varying function. Okay, I'll put a link in the description to a physics video that I uh, that I posted previously, where we talk about simple harmonic motion and the fact that how important simple harmonic motion is. How simple harmonic motion is arguably at the heart of physics. We talk about that. Simple harmonic motion is a sinusoid. Trigonometry. Okay, so now to answer the question that uh, that was left, a comment about why we need to use trigonometry and calculus, or why, why is there trigonometry and calculus? Okay, so what is, cal what is calculus? What's the point of calculus? The main points are to calculate the rate of change of curves and the areas under curves. There's more, there's more to it to calculus than that. That's those, the central points, right? The tangent problem, the velocity problem, the area problem, the distance problem. Go watch. I'll, I'll put a link to that video as well in the description. I think I posted that already. If I haven't, if that video is not posted yet, there won't be a link. But once I've posted that video, I'll put a link. But again, we're trying to find, for calculus, we just want to find, we want to take any curve and find the, the tangent, the equation of the tangent line or the, or the, the slope of the tangent line or the rate of change of the, cur of the curve at a point or the area under a curve. That's what calculus, that's the point of calculus. So when we're developing calculus, when you're going through your calculus book, we do that for all of the different functions that we have. We do that for polynomials. We do that for, so all the different functions that you learned in algebra, polynomials, rational functions or, or fractional functions, logarithms, exponentials. That's what we develop in calculus. We we, we want to find the rate of change, the derivative, on any of those functions. And then we develop integrals because we want to be able to find the areas under the curve of any of those functions. We want all of the functions that we use in life, we want to be able to use them in, use them in calculus. Well, one of those is absolutely trigon trigonometric functions. So that's why you'll see, like, you'll just say, like, you'll go through, you'll learn limits, and then you'll go to uh, derivatives, Right. And then if you looked at a calculus textbook, it'll just say, okay, it'll tell you how to, how to find the derivative of a polynomial, right? So x to the n power or x to the fifth, the derivative of that is 5 to the x, 5x to the fourth. They'll show you those. Then they'll show you maybe how to take the derivative of a logarithm or something. And then there'll just be a, chat, a section where it says finding the derivative of trigonometric functions. It'll be its own section. That's just, okay, so the idea is... All right, so if I want to find the derivative of a trigonometric function, I want to find the rate of change, of a, like right here. What's the slope right here of this trig function? So we don't really use trigonom trigonometry in calculus, right? It's not like that. We just cover that. We, it's just a function that we want to be able to, uh, want to, be able to apply calculus to because it's such an important function. And same thing. So maybe we want to find, we want to find the area under the curve for whatever reason, you know, right, you know, from zero to here, well, we have to learn how to apply integrals on trigonometric functions. So that's why there's so many, you just have to get used to working with the, with the trig functions because they're so important. You want to be able to apply the subject of calculus on trig functions. Any type of math you develop, if it's a useful math, they're going to bring in trig, they're going to bring in trig functions and say, okay, well, how do we use this on trig functions? How do we use this on exponentials? How do we use this math that we just created on um, polynomials, right? Okay, if you found this video helpful, drop a like, consider subscribing, and I will see you guys in the next video.